Good afternoon and welcome to this general purpose and administration committee meeting of Monday, March the 8th. I'll call this uh, open session to order and ask for a moment of silence. Thank you. Is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest and the nature thereof? Seeing none, previous to this public uh, open session, uh, we had an in-camera session in, in the continuing interest of transparency and open government. I'm reporting in public session any outcomes from today's closed session meeting. As a result of our closed session today, I wish to report the following. Council considered a report with respect to advisory committee and board appointments and vacancies. The report was received and discussion occurred um, with respect to the applicants and the current vacancies. At this time, I will ask for... Sorry. I beg your pardon? Sorry, Matt. Sorry to interrupt, Madam Mayor. I just wanted to see if Councillor Keysbrink's declaration of interest still stands for this portion of the meeting, as there will be a vote taken with respect to the closed matter. That's correct. Um, Councillor Keysbrink, um, you did declare um, a pecuniary interest in, in nature um, before the in-camera session. You did not participate... Uh, is it your your decision to not vote on this, uh, declare correct. a conflict and not vote on this? That's correct, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, and also, Madam Mayor, we haven't done the roll call. Would you mind if we do that now? Okay. Please go ahead. Sorry. That's um, okay. Madam Mayor's present. Councillor Watton, are you present? Councillor Watton? I am present. Thank you. Councillor McDougall? Present. Councillor Guido? I'm present, thank you. Councillor Ross? Present, thank you. Councillor Keysbrink? Present. And Councillor Brown? Present. Thank you. Now I'll go through the list of staff who are in attendance. Adam Dubecki, Carol Coleman, Denise Stevenson, Ken Nix, our CAO, Kevin Arsenal, Laura Barda, Lori Bowers, Chief Mark Burney, Robin Prentice, Sandra Frey, and Terry Barton. Madam Mayor, would you like me to go over the rules for the electronic meeting this afternoon? Yes, please. Thank you. Please mute your microphone while not talking. This will avoid any background noise that may occur where you are and will avoid any echo of the audio. Please use headphones as this will also improve the audio quality. If you would like to speak, please use the hand raise function in the meeting. The mayor will then call upon you when it's your turn. For members of council, if you leave your computer, please let the mayor know so that quorum can continue to be met. When moving or seconding a motion, please use the hand raise function in the meeting and the mayor will announce who the mover and seconder are. This meeting is being recorded and live streamed to the township's YouTube channel. We will be using an electronic voting process during tonight's meet, or sorry, this afternoon's meeting. At the appropriate times, Sandra will announce that the voting is open and council members will be asked to make a selection. Once everyone has voted, Sandra will announce that the vote is closed. If for any reason a council member is unable to vote, please announce your vote verbally and say in favor or against. If the electronic voting system stops working for any reason, we will revert back to the mayor asking each council member for their vote. And this, these rules only apply if there is a recorded vote requested. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That concludes my opening statement. Thank you very much. And uh, continuing on um, to where I was previously, uh, Councillor considered a report with respect to advisory committee and board appointments and vacancies. The report was received and discussion occurred with respect to applicants and the current vacancies. At this time, I will ask for uh, Councillor Watton to move the recommendation contained in the report. Councillor Watton. Thank you, Madam you Mayor. Do you, do you want me to read the, um, the three uh, appointees? Yes, please. Okay. I'd um, like to move that Kenneth La Rosa be appointed to the Scugog Tourism Advisory Committee for the remainder of the 2018-2022 term. Valerie Fry be appointed to the Caesarea Hall Board for the remainder of the 2018-2022 term and that the Durham Insurance Pool be advised of the change of membership. And also that 
the resignations of, of Cecil Lamrock, Linda Caskey, and Sierra Howie from the Skewdog Accessibility Advisory Committee be received and that the vacancies continue to be advertised in the newspapers and the website. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Brown. All those in favor, say yes or in favor, please. Yes. In favor? In favor. In favor. Any opposed? Seeing none, that is carried. Thank you very much. Announcements uh, from council and staff. Um, Councilor Brown. Uh, I don't have any announcements. My hand was up from before. I apologize for that. Okay. Any any announcements from council? Um, Ms. Bowers, uh, I'll I'll get to you when we get to staff because I have some announcements. If uh, council does not have any, seeing none, um, I've got a few announcements. Uh, the region has won some awards in the past few weeks, and that's good news. The economic development team has won three Marketing Canada awards for downtowns of Durham project the 2019 Invest Durham and Virtual Farming Campaign. Uh, the region also won the National Prestige Award for the 2019 Ontario Parasport Games. And the region was also recognized as one of the 2021 Smart Communities. And uh, I have another one here about um, about uh, May the tw March the 12th. And I've got to find it here. It's been almost a year since the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a global pandemic on March 11th of last year. At this time last year, no one envisioned what the pandemic would mean to our residents and businesses. It has been a difficult year for everyone and Scugog along with Durham municipalities are lowering their flags this Friday in recognition of the suffering and loss experienced by our residents during this pandemic over the last year. We hope and pray that we will be able to safely return to normal this coming year. Thank you very much. And now I will call on um, Chief Bernie. You have an announcement. Thank you, Mayor Drew. I have uh, a couple, if you could bear with me. First one is actually a really good uh, news story um, in looking at uh, the COVID uh, numbers across Durham Region, specifically about Scugog. I see nothing but zeros, uh, no reported or active cases uh, ongoing in Scugog right now. And that is just great news. So I'm very happy to share that with you. Uh, next one I'd like to speak to uh, is the, the ECG. And in the ECG, the Emergency Control Group continues to prepare for the next protective level for Durham Region. And we're hoping that to, to be orange or better. Uh, the vaccine rollout by Durham Health is about to be enhanced with the opening of the Durham North vaccination site. Uh, the site will operate on a rotational schedule between Brock, Scugog, and Uxbridge. Community services staff, along with Durham Health, are in the final stages of preparing the SCRC as the North Durham vaccination site here in Scugog. Uh, residents filling the current criteria and wishing to be vaccinated should go to Durham.ca to A, determine their availability or the availability of vaccinations, and B, to schedule a vaccination appointment. Uh, today or earlier today, I was on the Durham.ca uh, website and all the available appointments at the current clinics are fully booked until March 13th. However, additional vaccine supplies are anticipated to keep the region's vaccination strategy moving forward, including opening the North Durham site March 15th in Brock and then March 16th, 17th in Scugog. And I'd like to point out, Mayor Drew, that any resident meeting the, the vaccination criteria can schedule an appointment at any of the vaccination sites, regardless of where they live in Durham. And uh, that's for the vaccination sites in Durham specifically. For residents with mobility issues, a communication later this week should identify community partners who can assist with transportation. And finally, 
do I or don't I get vaccinated? Uh, it is every person's right to choose whether uh, to get va vaccinated or not to get vaccinated. Uh, what I can share is that safe, reliable vaccines can help protect you and your family from COVID-19. They will be an important tool to help stop the spread of the virus, build immunity in Ontario, and allow all of us to safely resume to normal life. When a large percentage of the population becomes immune to COVID-19, the spread of the virus will slow down and hopefully stop. And lastly, Mayor Drew, I'd just like to uh, identify that tomorrow, the, uh, the previously canceled joint services training exercise over on the Caesarea side of the lake will in fact happen with Durham Police along with Scugog firefighters. And uh, residents should anticipate a large number of emergency vehicles, fire firefighters, police officers and police equipment on the ground and in the air over the water as we trained to uh, our skills and abilities. And that, Mayor Durham, is my announcements. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chief. Um, count, uh, uh, Ms. Bowers? Thank you, Mayor Drew. Just a quick staff update uh, to let folks know that the Spring Leisure and Activity Guide is now available online at scugog.ca. And uh, registration opened this morning at 7 a.m. Township will be offering virtual and in-person recreational and fitness programs this spring according to red levels and hopefully orange uh, level uh, in the near future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor McDougall, you have your hand up. Uh, did, you, did you have an announcement? I sure do, Madam Mayor. Um, I wanted to say that... Uh, uh, to you and to all the other amazing women that uh, uh, are part of my life every day. Uh, today is International Women's Day, so I want to say thank you to uh, all of the women that uh, I interact with on a daily basis. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Uh, and uh, on behalf of all the women on council, we thank you. Um, I had a, uh, an interview with uh, Rogers, and I think you were just sent the link and uh, that was uh, a topic in the last portion of the of the meeting of the uh, interview, um, and I guess it's going to be shown a few times today. Uh, but anyway, thank you very much for that recognition, uh, Councillor Kiesebrink. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just wanted to let everyone know that there's a new story walk called Bear Snores On, and it's available for families at the Ken Reed Conservation Authority. They're doing this and in. in um, tandem with uh, their local library. So families will be able to uh, go on this outside uh, healthy experience and really enjoy that. So it's only available uh, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday this week. So hopefully people can look at their website, uh, Kawartha Conservation and uh, see all the details and take advantage of that. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much. And uh, don't see any more hands, so we'll move on to presentations and delegations. Our first delegation is the uh, Port Perry Hospital Foundation. Our practice is five minutes for delegations, but I hope the council will support allowing this delegation to extend the time limit, considering the message they have for us this afternoon. I welcome Trina De Bruin, Port Perry Hospital Foundation President and Vice President Kim Coates, who are no strangers to Scugog Township as former staff members, and to Rachel Agnaluzzi, the CEO of the foundation. Uh, Ms. Flurry, could you give a three minute warning um, at the seven minute mark? Um, and uh, so that will allow 10 minutes altogether. So I hope that works for you. Um, and don't please proceed. Hello, can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Good afternoon, your worship and members of council. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today, or at least online, uh, to speak with you about our, our exciting new CT scanner campaign, and to thank all of you who have helped us promote our campaign launch last week by sharing your cookie photos and having a little fun while doing so. For those who do not know me, my name is Trina De Bruin, the president of the Port Perry Hospital Foundation. With me today is Kim Coates, our vice president, and Rachel Agnaluzzi, our founder and CEO. I'd now like to turn our presentation over to Rachel to tell you a little bit more about the project to bring a CT scanner to the Port Perry Hospital. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, so the presentation slides are here, and this is the Here For You campaign that we want to present to you. It's a $4 million campaign to bring a CT scanner and other essential equipment to Port Perry Hospital. 
Can I have the next slide, please? So let's talk a little bit about the residents' use of our Port Perry Hospital. Scugog residents account for nearly 12,000 visits and stays at Port Perry Hospital. And this is from the year 2019. Um, and Scugog residents account for 1,979, nearly 2,000 CT scans at Lake Ridge, um, Oshawa, Ajax Pickering and Bowmanville hospitals. There's no doubt that Scugog residents rely on our local Port Perry Hospital and the wider Lake Ridge Health for their care. Next slide, please. So I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the use of CT. So of the nearly 2000 Scugog um, CT scans that were performed, seven, 972 of them were were done through a transfer by ambulance. So many were in emergency situations or when a patient was too sick to travel by themselves. So almost half of all the scans. And we know that precious time can be lost in the transfer of a sick or an injured patient to another facility. And that doesn't meet the standard of care that, we're, that our community needs and deserves. Next slide, please. So talking a little bit about what CT is, um, it's an essential diagnostic and assessment tool. Probably many of you have had a CT scan. It uses X-ray, but rather than a single X-ray, like we're familiar with from an X-ray machine, the X-ray surrounds the patient in that big donut and takes hundreds of pictures that then together create a three-dimensional image for our physicians to understand what's going on. CT is used in physical trauma, so accidents where there's an injury to the head, spine, chest, or ab abdominals, um, surgical emergencies such as appendicitis or a bowel obstruction. Many of us have heard a story of a friend or a neighbor or a family member who's had to travel for an appendicitis CT at Oshawa before coming back from surgery. Um, stroke, time is brain with stroke. There's nothing more timely than getting a CT um, diagnosis so that the determinant of the kind of uh, stroke treatment can be assessed and, and determined. Um, pulmonary embolism, so blood clots in the lungs, pneumonias and other respiratory concerns. It's become quite important in um, tracking and understanding the uh, damage from COVID, um, aneurysm, and then in cancer staging. Cancer staging and surveillance is really important to give people time back, so less travel is very important. Next slide, please. So the campaign is launched. Thank you, everybody who helped. We're at 2.45 million towards our $4 million goal. That 2.45 million includes money from um, donations from years ago that were set in trust um, when we tried once again over a decade ago to bring CT and then um, combined with mainly four very significant leadership gifts, including 350,000 from our auxiliary. Our goal is to bring CT to Port Perry by the end of 2022. Ministry of Health approval is a 12 month process, so we're hoping that will start soon. And the foundation must remain committed to other priority medical equipment through the course of this campaign because the hospital really relies on our community supporting excellent care throughout. And we don't want to come out of this two year campaign and have a deficit in other areas of the hospital. Next slide, please. So I'd like to talk just a little bit about um, the Township of Scugog's investment in the past in great care, lighting the way in 2007. Significant funds, 500,000 from the Township towards endoscopy and emergency department projects. Your Hospital, Your Future in 2014, which updated patient rooms, 187,500. Physician recruitment over eight years between 2002 and 2010. Um, significant funds here. And something to be said about that, the re it, it helped us bring the best docs. There's no doubt that having a CT at Port Perry now will continue to help with that trend. We've got to give our docs the equipment they need, especially this next generation of docs. This will be the kind of thing that they think about whether this is there for them. So over $800,000 from the township of Scugog has been great investments in local health care for this community. So congratulations on those wonderful investments. And my final slide before I turn it over to back to Tarina is just, um, just to sort of pull this all together and ask our council if you will stand with us in bringing a CT to Port Perry Hospital so it's here for our community. There is no doubt that having 
diagnostic CT services at Port Perry will reduce time to active treatment and in some cases even send save patients' lives. So with that, I'm going to pass it back to Tarina. Thank you, Rachel. So as Rachel has mentioned, we are looking to raise another approximately $1.5 million and we need your help. We understand that the 2020 budget is passed and done and it includes a commitment to another very important project. So we are asking for consideration of a donation from the township of $200,000 over a four-year term starting with the 2022 budget. The township and the foundation have a successful history of working together to promote the best interests of our community and we look forward to continuing this relationship. The foundation is willing and open to undertaking discussions around donation timeframes should the council find it beneficial to recommend a different payment term. Thank you again for your time and attention. We are excited about this new campaign and look forward to enhancing the exceptional service we are able to provide to our community. The hospital is here for you and we are asking for everyone to be here for our hospital. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? That's it for me. <laughs> Thank you. Hello? Mayor Hello? Drew, are you Hello? on mute? Sorry, yes, I was muted. Uh, yes, you made it under the timeline. So thank you very much. Uh, good for you. Um, I do. Uh, I do have a motion ready um, at the at the proper time. But at this point in time, I'm looking for questions to the delegation. And uh, Councillor McDougall, you had your hand up and you've taken it down, I think. So did you have a question? I didn't have a question, Madam Mayor, but uh, myself having had a few CTs, uh, I certainly would have benefited from having one in Port Perry. So I'm certainly looking forward to this in the future for anybody else who needs such care. Thank oh, you, okay. Madam Mayor, and thank you thank for you. the presentation. Thank you. Councillor Keesabry? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Myself to uh, echo um, Councillor Ian's comments, uh, having both personally and my husband and our family benefited from having local uh, medical facilities would really be in support of whatever um, our staff can recommend. I know our budget has passed, but if there's some way that we could contribute sooner than 2022, um, we would. I, I would be really interested in that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Thank you, and through you, Madam Mayor, I just want to congratulate the three for uh, presenting today and and their pursuits of uh, better health for all of us in Port Perry and surrounding areas. I just want to make sure I understand correctly, it's $200,000 over four years starting in 2022. Is that correct? That's what you're asking? Yes, thank you. Uh, through the warden, or sorry, through the mayor. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I work for a municipal government at the warden system, so I apologize. I was a fool of the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> through the mayor, that is correct. We're asking for consideration of a $200,000 donation in equal installments over a four-year term uh, starting in 2022. So approximately, if the uh, council could consider uh, a $50,000 a year donation. Great, thank you very much. Back to the warden. Thank you. Thank you, I don't see any other hands up. Um, here is a, a motion that you might want to consider and I'll be looking for someone to make this motion that council support the donation request from the Port Perry Hospital Foundation of $200,000 and ask staff to report back on options to fund the request, including an option to fund the amount over a period of up to four years. Could, um, Councillor Brown, are you making that motion? Be happy to. And Councillor Kieserbrink, you're seconding? Yes, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Uh, questions or comments to the motion? Seeing none, unless, uh, is your hand up there from before, Councillor Brown? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you very, very much for your uh, for your delegation this afternoon. This really is exciting news, and uh, we look forward to uh, to seeing this wonderful new equipment at our hospital for for our residents and uh, and visitors to town. Uh, so um, I'll call the question, please, so you can verbally say yes or in favor. I'm calling the question. In favor. In favor. In favor. In, in favor. favor. In Opposed? favor. Opposed? Hearing none, 
Thank you very much. Thank you again for your delegation. That motion is passed and we will be happy and working hard to uh, to achieve our goal as well as yours. Thank you for attending today. Oh thank my gosh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you bye -bye. so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye for now. Thank bye. you. Bye. Uh, we come now to the consent agenda, and um, we have 10.1.1 uh, has been pulled by uh, Councillor Ross. Thank you for letting us know. Are there any other polls? Seeing none, um, the, uh, for the remainder, um, all those in favor of the recommendations? In favor. In favor. Uh, in favor. In favor. Do you need a mover, Madam Mayor? Move yes, over. please. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, I do. Councillor Guido, thank you. Councillor McDougall, you seconding? I will second, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. And now, calling the question. All those in favor? Uh, verbally, you can you can answer verbally. In favor, Madam Mayor. Opposed. Hearing none, that is carried. Moving to 10.1.1, Councillor Ross, you uh, pulled that. Do you want to make the, uh, the motion? I'll make the motion to get it on the floor. Thank you. Thank you. Seconder? Councillor Ross, second. Councillor Watton has seconded it. Uh, okay, uh, Councillor Ross, please go ahead with your question or comment. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Questions for Director Heritage or uh, Ms. Stevenson in regards to the uh, part two fine increase. Um, question in regards on the report, I believe it's um, the second, second term is that the increase in fees is believed to help with greater compliance. I'm hoping you can just uh, further explain what, why we believe that the increase by about $10 is going to have a greater compliance rate. Yes, through you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor. Um, thank you, Councillor Ross. Um, as uh, you're aware through the report, our current fines are among the lowest in the region. And based on history and what we've seen uh, over the past three years, many consider them a cost of doing business. Um, we are finding that many are willing to take the risk um, parking and hoping they don't get caught. Part of this, it's it's all it's a two-pronged approach because part of this is due to the fact that unfortunately we have not been able to provide a level of consistent enforcement as much as we would like, um, just due to the, the, the lack of staffing. Uh, but now I think we're going to be able to uh, hit that a little bit better with our part-time officer. And as with anything, anytime uh, people are faced with um, increased costs, uh, it does act as more of a deterrent. So we're hoping that with a two-pronged approach uh, that uh, this increase will help uh, increase the deterrent. I mean, I'm sure it will. there will be some who will continue, um, but there will be others that will not be able to manage uh, the in increased amount. And with the amount that we have uh, suggested, we're, we walk a fine line. We want to find an amount that is going to provide enough of a deterrent without creating a fine that's so high that people just can't manage and end up sending everything into our court system. Um, based on the fact that we haven't had an increase since 2005, the only way we saw to do this was to take our survey, look at the average and start with the average amount and feel it out from there. We didn't really want to go too high again because we don't want to see everybody heading to the court system, but we want to find an area that will help us in reaching uh, that additional deterrent. Okay, thank you. Uh, further to that, if I may, Madam Mayor, um, just following up, uh, mentioned you, you just said uh, start at the average is um, it sounds like this may be uh, looked at again in the future what, what are the plans for that through you madam mayor 
We don't have plans for that, Councillor Ross. Um, the POA system is such that um, when we make a decision, we have to send the process off to the um, Ministry of the Attorney General, to the Solicitor General's office for approval. And traditionally, that is something that is not an every year thing. It's it's not an encouraged. It's not encouraged to um, look at your fines as, uh, for example, uh, with our user fees as doing a cost of living increase. So when we make that determination, it's something that we look at uh, long term, and usually it's not reviewed again until another or or newer bylaw is put into place. Okay, great. So it's important to get it right the first time. Um, Correct. Okay, great. Uh, follow up through you, Madam Mayor. Yes. I'm just, I'm just um, struggling with the fact that we're hoping that compliance will be reached at the average level, whereas, um, and basing that off of the other um, local municipalities, why are we choosing the average if we, or maybe I'm just not seeing it, but what data do we have that compliance has been reached at this at these other municipalities? Or are they looking at perhaps when their time is up to increase it again? Um, have we looked into their compliance levels at that rate? And is it something that we want to actually do? Or do we want to leapfrog to go further? Through you, Madam Mayor, to the councillor. Um, I wouldn't recommend going too much further, Councillor Ross, because as I mentioned, we have to find a balance. We, do, we don't want to go so high that we encourage uh, anybody who's received a parking infraction to take it to court. Um, through conversations with the other municipalities, they have seen, they have found that, generally speaking, they've reached that balance. With respect to Scugog, um, in the last three years with all of the tickets that we've issued, we've actually only had three uh, request trial. Um, it's hard to judge what our level of compliance would be, be based on where somebody else is because they're already sitting at that level. We have to look at what this is going to do for our residents because this is going to be a change for them Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, have other comparator have other systems been looked at? I know some of our comparators um, in specific, I believe unless they've changed it, Oshawa uses a tiered system. Um, have those been evaluated at our level? And would would that be something that perhaps we could look into? I know that in, in, in full disclosure to my colleagues here, I have spoken with uh, uh, with Ms. Stevenson about this, um, and I understand that we can't, we don't have the administrative power or the technology to do something like a tiered system, and we haven't even looked if it's the, the best approach for us. But is that something that we can look into? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, that Councillor Ross is a very large process. It is something that uh, the township can look into um, over the long term, the difference between the municipalities that have a tiered system and those that don't are those municipalities are working on an AMP system, which is basically administrative penalties. So rather than their tickets being processed through the court system, through the Provincial Offences Act, as ours are, everything is done in-house. So it's a large change administratively. It's also a change in how the tickets are processed internally, re requiring additional staff, requiring someone uh, separate and apart who is able to facilitate. It is a very, very large process, not something that could be done uh, quickly, um, but definitely something that if council uh, would suggest could be looked at in the long term. Okay, thank you. Hey, with your indulgence, Madam Mayor, if I may just ask a couple more questions. Sure. Um, I know one of my concerns and is, um, as you said, the, the cost of doing business and some people just can't manage that. 
the, the true price of, of a ticket for some uh, in a lower income uh, and lower income individual is far greater um, for that individual, even though the price tag is the same uh, than others. But um, how do we mitigate that with the current system? Um, we don't want people you know, having a, a parking ticket that is uh, so much that it, it causes them you know, financial distress or grief. That, that's not what the, the intention is. The intention is to curb the behavior of illegal parking. Um, but has that been looked into in your report here in that um, some we say we don't want people that they can't manage it a uh, higher fine, but there are some that won't be able to manage that fine. Has that been looked into in your report? Uh, we haven't through you, Madam Mayor, uh, to the councillor. There, there is a process through the POA, the Provincial Offences Act system, uh, that allows someone with true hardship um, to request a reduction. That is done so through anybody and everybody has the option to have, for lack of a better term, have their day in court. So they do have the option to speak with a JP um, and to look at having that reduced. That is there and available for anybody. Um, but I, I should point out that generally speaking, for our normal general public that abides by our rules of the road, it won't affect them. This is only affecting people who choose to not follow our traffic bylaws. Of, of course, you're right. Okay, um, the, the last question I have is, and I'm on track here for Councillor Brown's 34 question record, but um, <laughs> the, what, what are we looking at beyond just uh, increasing fines? Because I know I didn't know what a parking fine was before this report came and people I've talked to didn't know what it was. So if we're raising uh, the fines and that's, you know, it, it makes news today and maybe this week, if we're lucky, then how do people understand, how do we actually deter people from parking if they don't know if a parking fine is $30, $40 or $150? Is at this point, is there any educational platform set up for that? Through you, Madam Mayor, and again, uh, with full disclosure, uh, Councillor Ross and I uh, have had a conversation where we spoke about education and I am uh, very supportive of, um, you know, putting a, an education program together um, through our website, through handouts, through um, working with uh, our communications department and social media, um, we can absolutely uh, look at putting something in place to get the word out to the public. Um, but keeping in mind that, uh, you know, we do want to let everybody know that we are making these changes and that we are serious about enforcement. Um, however, the offenses are general offenses. You know, if the sign says no parking, and you park underneath it or beside it, the, the majority of our offenses are offenses that everybody with a valid driver's license should be aware of. So I think from an education perspective, uh, our focus should be on um, why it's important and the fact that Scugog is um, serious about, you know, making sure everybody follows the rules of the road. Thank you, Ms. Stevens, for your answer. I'll relinquish the floor. I just, I am glad to um, I have a couple notes, perhaps uh, an amendment to come forward, but I'll relinquish the floor to my colleagues for now. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor McDougall. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor, and um, through you to uh, Ms. Stevenson. Uh, question is, um, with regards to parking, is these will this just be on street enforcement, or will this include the municipal parking lots? Through you, Madam Mayor, to Councillor McDougall, the majority of our parking is on street parking. However, uh, we do do enforcement in our municipal lots, uh, primarily down at the boat launch, where we have the pay and display requirement that is enforced. Uh, on a regular basis. Our other lots at this time uh, are enforced 
uh, I don't even want to say on a complaint basis. It, it, they're enforced for items where people are parking, taking up three spots or parking incorrectly. Um, right now, those uh, parking lots are used, uh, a large portion of them are used by uh, employees of many of our shops on Queen Street, as well as in the overnight hours for residents of the apartments uh, that above the stores on Queen Street where they don't have uh, other assigned parking. So we haven't been uh, targeting that right now, um, hoping to look forward at potentially um, uh, looking at a, a potential permit process to give those people uh, options that they don't currently have. Further, Councillor McDougall? Yes, thank you. So perhaps in the future, I mean, I, I know that I have a lot of residents who will come into Port Perry or they'll choose to come in from Ward 1, either they'll head over to Oxbridge, unfortunately, or they'll come into Port Perry and, and they typically always want to park behind um, the post office. That just seems to be the only spot that anybody wants to go and look for a parking spot. That's a three hour lot um, and it's not unusual to see vehicles there all day long. I'm not sure if in the future it's possible to encourage, you know, people to who are going to be taking up a three hour spot for longer than three hours to maybe use a different spot uh, and perhaps walk a little wee bit further to their place of work and allow those who are coming to shop uh, to park a little bit closer. But in the idea of the costs of doing business, uh, we are certainly deterring people from driving to Port Perry and parking, you know, possibly as close as they can to where they want to shop it makes Walmart look um, even more amenable. Anyway, that's my opinion. Perhaps in the future we can take a longer, harder look at parking and uh, the urban core. Anyway, thank you for your report, Ms. Stevenson. Thank you, Councillor McDougall. Councillor Kieserbrink. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, like, I think the the fee for blocking a fire route or a fire hydrant. I don't think anyone w would contest that. That's that's safety. Um, but I understand the three hour restriction um, concerns. Is Could you tell us a little bit more about your idea for a permit process? And should, should these changes to our parking infractions be in tandem with a permit process so that we're presenting the chain, the enforcement piece with a resolution piece? Through you, Madam Mayor, uh, to the councillor. Um, if, if the township decides to go forward with a, um, with a permit process, that is a separate process from the parking fines. The parking fines are part of a court process and uh, I don't think the two necessarily um, walk hand in hand. If we choose to go through with a permit process, that's not going to have any effect or should not have any effect on our parking fines, except from the standpoint that if someone had a permit, it may exempt them from certain restrictions. It would be up to up, up to the township to determine uh, which um, what permit process they choose to take, whether we look at a process that is strictly within our municipal parking lots or whether we expand that to uh, on street parking as well. Further, Councillor Keysbring? No, Madam Mayor, that's all. Thank you. Councillor Brown? Thank you, and through you, Madam Mayor. Um, Ms. Stevenson, uh, what constituent of mine, this sort of piggybacking on the previous councillor's comments, mm -hmm. suggested that uh, that had getting a sticker, if you had a sticker or something, which is, I guess, what you're talking about, that if you're a resident and you could apply or purchase a sticker, that that would help in terms of being able to park longer 
It, is that something that we are looking at, or is there a way that we can look at something like that? Because it, if it works, it works. He's talking about White Rock, BC, which is south of Vancouver. And I've been there, I, and I didn't notice the stickers, but I'm sure they must be working properly. Is it something that we would uh, have an opportunity to have a peek at somehow? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, uh, to Councillor Brown. Uh, it's definitely something that would, it sounds like it's part and parcel to what a permit process would contain. The only caveat I would put to that is that when you look at a permit process, you have to also look at um, mobile enforcement programs. So it, it's a much bigger process because, for example, uh, with your sticker or whether it's uh, a one day permit that for street parking that they go online and print out themselves, that works beautifully in May to October. But once the winter hits and the snow falls, uh, you need a program that can, where someone, an officer on the road can put in a license plate and it'll automatically pop up and say, okay, these people have a permit. Otherwise they're walking around with a scraper and <laughs> having to scrape off windshields to see if something actually exists. So it's, it's definitely part of the permit process that can be included. Um, but as I said, it's a little bit of a bigger, um, a bigger process. So and then again through the mayor, um, so you're saying it may be cost prohibitive to do something like that. Is that what I'm getting from you? I don't believe long term it would be cost prohibitive. Um, from my past experience, I know that there is an initial um, cost output, uh, but after that, the year after year costs are relatively low. It's just that there is an initial cost output that has to be considered. And again, through the mayor, so is there a way, and again, I get back to my original question, is there a way that we can have a look at this? And if so, how do we do it? Councillor Brown, you can just uh, request that um, that uh, staff have a look at it, uh, include it as an amendment to the motion. Yes, I'd love to, if that's possible, please. And okay, I'll you get... work on your amendment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything further, Councillor Brown? No, that's good for now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. CAO? Madam Mayor, um, I am fully supportive of looking at different options. I just uh, wonder if that, sorry, I just am not sure if, if the system that Councillor Brown was talking about works in conjunction with a paid parking um, uh, regime. And uh, so we, I would encourage that if we do look at those kind of systems, we under, we encourage understanding what those systems are all about, whether it's a free parking or paid parking regime that uh, backs everything. So, um, Mr. CAO, would you recommend that um, uh, Councillor Brown include in an amendment or would you take it as direction that um, um, other options be looked at or how would you word that? We could, we could uh, take it in general um, as uh, just direction. Uh, okay. But I just wanted to bring that up because it may or may not work in a non um, fine or parking enforcement regime or paid parking regime. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, uh, Councillor Brown, you don't need an amendment. Staff will take it as direction. Uh, any other speakers? Oh, uh, Councillor Brown, you had another one? Sorry. Uh, no, that's good. Thank you. I'll move my hand. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay, I don't see any, any other speakers. I would uh, call on uh, Councillor Ross, but I do have a question first myself. Um, how long would do you anticipate the process would be to get the uh, permission forwarded uh, from the Ministry of the Attorney General? Uh, through you, uh, to you, Madam Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> um, in, it's hard to say in these times, it has been a little slower than usual. What, it would probably, my guess would be upwards of a couple of months to get the approvals back. Okay, thank you. Just uh, curious. And um, 
Um, I, I did have a concern about communication as well. So, um, you know, perhaps we could um, start to work on that. But, um, you know, until it's approved, um, you know, that we can go full force into a communication. So I would hate for people to be caught blindsided. Um, so uh, it would be good to, to communicate that, especially to the BIA members. Uh, so that they're aware, and uh, you know they don't uh, they don't park in front of their stores and for long periods of time. Um, okay, so thank you. And I, uh, Councillor Ross, did you have an amendment? I do, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Um, just put it up in the uh, comments section so people can read it. But I'll just uh, read it out. Yes. Um, just an amendment onto it, a third bullet point that would read that staff prepare a public education plan that will aid in greater compliance with parking bylaws and include in this plan the possible use of implementing a graduated or tier-based fine structure, and that this is presented to Council on or before September 30th. Um, I'll just walk it through the, um, the education plan, which we already talked about. Ideally, um, it would, it would inc um, include behavioral modifications or behavioral nudges for the public. Um, these can be, you know, uh, just some examples, not that this is what we're looking for exactly, but examples would be, you know, um, high visibility, bright tickets on windows that uh, for people walking by understand that, you know, parking enforcement is happening here. It's not, you can't just take your, your risks or your chances, pardon me, um, as well as the owner is, uh, it, there's a shame factor involved there. Um, in, in addition, this would be signs posting saying, you know, this is, this is what the, the fees are so that people are aware that Parking here is going to cost them an extra 40 bucks. Um, also, the certainty of enforcement that we're publishing the fines and that we have optimized the schedules to, you know, if illegal parking is happening somewhere, we know that um, the bylaw is going to be there and, and to communicate that with the public so that they're aware. And uh, the last thing in there is the, the graduate tier based fine system. I understand uh, through the questions today and in talking with Ms. Stevenson, I understand that's not a possibility right now, but. I am very interested, and I think it's in the best interest of council to see what is involved. What what else do we need in order to get there to bridge that gap, um, and, and how much so that we can we can properly weigh the cost benefit of it. And and maybe at the end of the day, is we can't do this. It's a bridge too far. But so be it. We've looked into it, and uh, you know we can say that. And the last part of that is uh, September 30th. Um, just in conversation with Director Heritage, that seemed like a uh, a realistic time frame. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Ross, and, and I think everybody's going to be on board with the uh, whole education because um, it's been mentioned a few times about uh, communication. I have a question about your um, the last part, uh, the graduated tier-based fine structure. Would that have to be approved by the Ministry of the Attorney General as well? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, we cannot do a graduated fine uh, schedule through our set through our POA set fine process. Um, the fines go to the uh, Solicitor General and the set fine is approved. We cannot um, amend that. We can't increase that at all. Um, the graduated fine process is something that could be done if at some point the municipality moves towards administrative penalties. Councillor Ross, your comment on that? Um, perhaps to the CAO or Director Heritage, is that something that you can take into consideration when looking at this uh, is provide um, guidance, I guess, but we can take it out of the amendment. Um, understanding that it's not possible now, uh, Ms. Stevenson, but that if we move it to an in-house, that it is possible. It, what, what does that look like? What is the cost to that? What is the staffing involved in that? I know that that's a bigger project. Is that something left to a separate report? Okay, I, I would suggest it should be a separate report, but I would ask the CAO. Mr. Nix. Um, Madam, Madam, Madam Mayor, Madam if Mayor. Uh, Director um, Heritage could comment, I think it would be appropriate. Director Heritage. Through you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor. It's something that we could certainly take a look at. Uh, and provide a recommendation back to Council by uh, September. As uh, Ms. Stevenson has indicated, our system is not set up for that right now, but uh, we could certainly take a look at other municipalities that use it and uh, provide feedback back to Council on it. 
that that's in line with what I'm trying to accomplish if 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 we can include that. Um, but that's something that we could be looking at in the long term. <laughs> Councillor Ross, uh, you might want to su may I suggest a, a slightly different wording in that um, instead of include in this plan, but just say um, and uh, report on report on the possible use of implementing graduate. Would you be willing to make that uh, change to your amendment? Uh, just some where just because you say plan, you say include in this plan the possible use. Yep, that's fine. Um, and report on. Yeah, so uh, and and include a report on the possible use of implementing. Okay. That's perfect. That's what we're trying to get at. Okay, amendment to the amendment then, but uh, I don't think we need to vote on that. It's friendly. Um, do you have a seconder for the amendment? I'll second that, Madam Mayor. Okay, that's Councillor uh, Watton. Any other questions to the amendment only? Uh, can, uh, oh, oh Councillor Ross, your hand's still up. Um, did you have something else you wanted to add? No, sorry, I'll take that down. That's okay. Uh, so, seconder for the amendment is Councillor Watton. Um, so, to the amendment only. All those in favor of the amendment? Verbally, fine. In favor. In favor. In favor. In favor. In favor. In favor. That's good. Um, Oppose none. Um, and the amendment is carried. Now to the motion as amended. All those in favor? In favor. In favor. In favor. In favor. In favor. Opposed? I'll take that as carried. Um, thank you very much, um, Councillor Ross and uh, and Council. Um, moving on uh, to 10.2, there's no correspondence. There's no um, items for separate discussion listed. Uh, no notices of motion. Any new business or general information? Nothing has been forwarded. Um, and I will call for a motion to adjourn. Councillor Guido, seconded, please. Councillor Kiesebrink, all those in favor? In favor. In favor. In favor. In favor. In favor. In favor. I think, think that's everybody opposed. Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank you, staff, um, for uh, everybody's participation today in the reports. And uh, we'll call it a day. Have a good have a good rest of the day, everyone.